Good afternoon. This is Ron Brown. It's Friday afternoon, February 23rd, 2024. I'm continuing with my series on watch list scans, but uh, today I'm uh, do, doing something different, as you'll see. Uh, and I'll get to that, but uh, first of all, let's uh, go to the standard risk disclaimer. You can pause and read the whole thing yourself if you want, but uh, any stock index or ETF mentioned in this presentation is not a recommendation to buy or sell. All trading strategies are used at your own risk. If you don't have the software, you should, uh, especially after watching this video, you'll see the uh, power of the high-growth stock software. Just go to the website, highgrowthstock.com, and you'll see a link to get a 30-day trial. And you don't have to enter a credit card. Now, my voice is a little bit uh, froggy again today, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this. What I have here are my warehouse quick pick views, and notice that I've added a couple of folders above my top down process scans. I have got so much material in here, and uh, there's material for everybody. Uh, these are things that have been requested over the years and uh, things that I've come up with. But uh, what I've decided to do this week is start a couple of folders with my favorite daily prospecting scans end of day. And there's only three in here, money flow in, money flow out, and weekly options only. And then under cut and rally, I have under cut and rally here and also in the intraday. Now these the only two in here are intraday money flow and most active stocks. These are recent. I've talked about both of these, and I find them to be some of the most valuable scans in here for intraday. So uh, these are the ones I'm starting with, and I hope not to expand this very much because I think pretty much uh, everything we need is right in here. I'm including the undercut and rally because I think these are some of the best scans for entering into low-risk trades. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you that if you're an Insider Club member, I have uh, added uh, uh, the artificial ETFs have been in here, artificial intelligence ETFs have been here, but I also added uh, artificial intelligence stocks. And this is a list which is uh, generated by bar chart. I just downloaded it and put it into HGSI. And Supermicrocomputer was not in the list. It's more of a hardware stock, but uh, it's been trading like an AI stock, so it's in here. All of these other ones were in bar chart. So I just want to point that out. You'll find it here. You'll find it in the uh, broad market indices. There's a leaders index and also the artificial intelligence stocks. And I believe I put it in this one also. Here it is, major indexes. So you'll find it in these two. You'll find them in here and down here as a standalone. Now on my uh, Friday morning commentary, I said this, uh, this market really needs to broaden out uh, to go higher, and it looks like it is broadening out now. Uh, I'm looking at a different computer on the NYSE. There's uh, 1,084 more advancers than decliners, and on the NASDAQ, there are 697 more advancers than decliners, and that wasn't the case early in the day. So we're starting to see some broadening out, which is good. But uh, let me um, work with the intraday scans today. And I think I'll concentrate on the undercut and rally, and uh, then I can look at the others, uh, maybe if I have time today. If not, uh, I'll do those in other videos. I just don't like to make the videos extremely long. So let's look at my layout here. I'm going to uh, look at, uh, let's see. I'll Got an arrow here. I'm using white today. This is a weekly chart because I'm using my undercut and rally number three chart 
and I'll show you that uh, uh, where it is. It's if you look under the visual filter backtest charts and go to number three. This is the one I'm using right now. Uh, these are bullish. Here's a bearish version. It doesn't have the intraday stats. This one does because most of the time I'm looking for long side trades. So that's where you'll find this chart. And I'll explain this as I go through this. Now just to make sure everything is up to date, I'm going to pause and run a manual update on the intraday quotes. So to do that, I just open this up and click on update now. I'll just, I was going to pause it, but I'll just let it run. So this information will be up to date up to the minute. It's almost finished. When you have uh, several things open in HGSI and you're updating, it takes a little while to, to update. You can see that it finished right there. Okay, so let's talk about this um, undercut and rally. And uh, these are bearish trades. I'm not going to look at those right now. I'm going to look right here. It says this is intraday, but I have left the end of day and intraday in both of these folders. Why? Because these stocks that meet the criteria as of the close last night with the three under the six and the fan up. You can see that they were, most of these were up, but they were meeting the criteria. If you look down this right here, this is the days since the three crossed the six to the downside. So everything is negative there. This one is the VPOC. You can see that there are several volume point of controls that are positive, but the threes have not crossed the six yet. Okay, so let's just go to the first one. This is current intraday. VRT, Verity Holdings. I'm going to bring this up and you can see that the three had not crossed the six as of yesterday and that's why we have a light green bar here. It's light green here also. Why? Because this is a bullish candle. It's either a, a bullish candle or a VPA flag. In this instance it is both. It's a transfer of ownership, which means that there was buying and then it sold off. But the following day, it went above. The three did cross the six. Well, actually, it didn't cross it until today. That's why it is sitting right here. Now, if, look down here. This is a good example. This sold off. There was a bullish candle, bullish candle, bullish candle, and a low volume test and a confirmation of that test and this stock moved above the three. The dark green line represents a movement above where the three is crossing the six. You can see it here and you can see it here. These other histograms down here are the six and the 18 day crossovers up and down and this is the 18 and 50. These are the micro trends, the short term trends, and the intermediate term trend. So if everything is up, that means you're more than likely in a very strong stock. And you can see this stock moved up nicely from this crossover from the 51 area and it didn't, um, the three didn't cross down through the six until right here. And now it looks like it's trying to go up again. Okay, let's look at uh, Sienna. Bring that arrow back up. And on this one, 
It crossed down three days ago to the downside, but the VPOC is now up. Okay, so let's take a look at this. First of all, let's go across here. This is as of last night. The volume was above average, the spread was above average, and the close was very high, but yet the three had not crossed the six. The RS was 78, the Kirkpatrick was 91, the last close was 56.32. It was at 3.4% yesterday, and For five days it was down, but you can see it closed near the top of the range. Now I'm at on end of day, so let's switch, just go down to the intraday and look for CIEN. You can see that I've re this is resorted because it's intraday. Let's see what CIEN is doing. It's down here. It's down a dollar thirty-nine. So if I bring it up, here's the signals we were getting yesterday, and notice that it still did not cross today. So here is a low volume test. There's a confirmation of that test with an effort to rise, but it still has not gone up enough for the three to cross over the six. And this is why I'm leaving both the end of day and the intraday in both of these because this is the end of day. It looked really good. But by the next day, what looks really good may be down at the bottom of these of this list, and there's 131 of them, and other stocks that are also setting up are going to come to the top of the list. So let's look at PCVX. $77 stock, you can see as of yesterday, the three was below the six for three days and the VPOC was also down, but it's getting a nice boost today. Up 468, it's a biotech. Going across here, you can see the had a VPA signal and yesterday that strength signal was strength C returning and the prior day was an effort to fall. So yesterday after an effort to fall, strength came into it and it's moving up today. Let's look at it. Okay, here we go. So going back, this is today. This is two days ago, which corresponds to this signal, effort to fall, right here. And then the next day, strength senior turning, right here, these signals right here, strength senior returning, after a downtrend, high volume up bar indicates strength. And then what happened today? It followed through with another confirmation of strength on po heavy pocket pivot volume yesterday, and the VPOC turned positive today, along with the three crossing through the six. So this was a setup day. This is a follow through day. Going back here, it was setting up here. It just didn't quite get through. But then right here, the three crossed the six. It remained above it. Effort to rise, effort to rise, took off, effort to rise. And then we get a negative signal as it sold, as there was profit taking. But the next day, it went up and it really has held that support. Let me put the crosshairs on. You can see that it held above the low of this big white candle and it's going up again. Also, what I haven't been pointing out is, uh, let me bring these arrows up again. And uh, the flag has to be up. Here's the eight, I'm sorry, the fan. Here's the 18, here's the 50, here's the 100, and here's the 200. So that's part of the description. You can see it right here. It says fan up. This is end of day. This is intraday. So if you like to look for potential trades for a watch list, end of day, look here. But 
make sure that if you are by your screen during the day to use the enter day because we get a totally different look. I'm going to go back up to this end of day here when I uh, and this is a uh, combo called moving up quickly so these are moving have moved up quickly during the day but that's the end of day but when I go to the enter day uh, this is a different version of it it says moving up quickly enter day and it's based upon uh, the percentage price change the range and the volume but primarily the uh, intraday one day change and the intraday range okay let's look at the next one uh, this is the three crossing the six so the first one the three is under the six and here these crossed on the end of day and the intraday these require a fan also. The fan has to be up. So looking at this, here's the end of day. You can see what's on top from yesterday. NVIDIA, which is no surprise. And uh, there were just a lot of semiconductor devices and so on. Before, they crossed over yesterday. Before that, these had not crossed over some of video today. And you can see that there was no light green line here because of this sell-off. And then on the earnings news, it shot up. It's traded in a wide range today. A lot of people, institutions changed, chased it early, and then it came, sold off, and now it's going back up as the market has steadied itself. So once again, the fan is here, the 18, the 50, the 100, and the 200. So these are strong stocks if the fan is up. I, I shouldn't say they're all strong, but if the fan is up and spread apart like this one is, that shows you that... It is a strong stock. Look as this stock built. Notice where the how close these were together. And then as the stock went up, the fan is going to widen and spread out. And you'll find it's it's only logical. The fan is going to be spread out on the strongest stocks. Okay, let's take this same group. There's 108 in there, but let's go down to the intraday version of it. And now we get a totally different look because of the combo. RB Global is at the top. This is $76 stock. It's crossed over yesterday because of the zeros on both the 3.6 and the VPOC. Let's go over here. There were no VPA flags yesterday. I'll bring and you can see on the prior two days, these are black candles. So there was no accumulation like over here. But it crossed over yesterday. And look at the gap up today and the big move up. The earnings were today, it looks like. That's why it's moving so much. You can see the weekly chart here. It's really been choppy and it's finally broken past that range. And it uh, uh, looks like it's got more room to go. Okay, Clear Channel Outdoor Holdings. This crossed over yesterday. Very high, wide, high. 89 RS. Oh, it's a cheap stock. I'm going to skip that one. Let's find a stock that's, well, here's one for 980, Hillman Solutions. Very high wide, and it had a down close yesterday, but still the three crossed the six, and the VPOC has been positive for 10 days. It's up 5.32 today. Going over here, there was a up thrust bar yesterday, 
after a no supply. So bringing it up, you can see that there were accumulation days here, crossovers, cross back over, trading in a range here, accumulation crossed over, came back, and finally it broke out yesterday, and it looks like it wants to go higher. I don't know a thing about this stock, but you can see that it's been in a long trading range. Maybe it's got some room to run. On the daily chart, I'm sorry, the weekly chart, it's moved up from around the $6 area right here at the low to the $10 area. So it's had a nice move over time. Okay, let me go down the list here. Here's one that I should have bought a long time ago. I didn't. I think I was in it at one time. Anyway, here it is. It crossed over yesterday on the 3 and the 6. I have a two-day window on these crossovers on these scans. And the VPOC crossed also. Now look at these light green lines in here. Obviously, the fan is up. And there were several accumulation days. Either a candle, strong candle, bullish candle, or a VPA flag. Yesterday was a crossover. Today it uh, shot up here. Earnings are out of the way, so I don't know why the big move. But here was the crossover yesterday was setups on all of these light green bars. Back here, two setup days before the crossover. It had a nice run after that. No setup days here, but it crossed over, had a decent run. Now I'm going to move on and show you that uh, there are scans in here where there is no fan requirement. Same thing, but without the fan requirement. The three under the six, three under the six. This is end of day, intraday, end of day, intraday. And I put these in here because a lot of times, stock, well, of course, a lot of times, stocks do move before the fan is in place, and that's what these do. So let's just take a look at this one. Here's the end of day yesterday. Look at this. A lot of stocks in here, 779, but that's why you wait until intraday. Still 779, but the cream will come to the top as far as the percentage price move. There's a lot of these. Notice that the RS is not high. I'm just going to go back up to the first one and notice that with the fan requirement that there's a lot of high relative strength stocks. Now back here with the no fan requirement. On the end of day, stocks that do have flags will come up with it, but there is no fan required. So if you go over to this column right here, fan uptrend, if it says yes, there's a fan. If you sort on that, well, that didn't do it. Oh, right here. Okay. If it says no, there's no fan. This one is fan downtrend. This is so this one is a in a fan downtrend. This one does not have a positive fan. But if I, that's Wendy's company. If I go back up and sort on the raw combo on the end of day, you can see that these are all high relative strength. They're pretty high relative strength plus an up fan. But now if I drop down to the no fan required intraday, sort on the raw combo, you see a lot of stocks here that are low relative strength. But they're moving up today. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look over here at the last VPA signal. There were a couple of us stopping volume, effort, effort to fail, but it's up today, so it's reversing. Here's an effort to rise, and let's take a look at this one right here. So we're getting the effort to rise today. Notice the fan. Notice how tight 
these are. In fact, I don't even see a 200 on here. Yeah. Oh, here it is, the red line. So there is no fan, but there is money coming into this stock today because there's an effort to rise. Now the three was under the six. It doesn't look like it's crossed over yet today. You can see that it hasn't. Down here it's been under for four days. This would be the fifth day today. But money is coming into it. If it can break past resistance it may go. But you can clearly see the difference between fans, a fan requirement, and a no fan requirement. Now I'm going to move down to the three crossing the six no fan requirement. I'll use the intraday. And you can see that these have all crossed within the past two days. There's that RB Global. Let's take a look at this one. What's it? $6.72. How about uh, Tandem Diabetes? That's one that, that's been around. Very high, wide, and a down day. But it did cross over on both the 3 and the 6 and the VPOC. And today it's up 13.54%. There was no VPA signal yesterday. So you can see that it's been under accumulation in this range with the, well, there, were, there was buying all the way down here. That's what these green bars represent, light green. But the crossover didn't happen until the dark green bar. And then it pretty much stayed in here yesterday. Another green bar. Wasn't a bullish candle, but there was a VPA flag stopping volume. That's why the light green bar is showing up. And then yesterday it crossed over and today it's following through. Looking at the weekly, there was a big move here. Then several weeks of retracement. You can see that it held here, which would be this area here. And now it's trying to go again. Heavier volume this week. Uh, yesterday there was a pocket pivot volume bar. If you're going to use these scans, just remember the strongest stocks have a fan up requirement. These down here with no fan requirement, you can get stocks that have an, a fan up or you can have stocks that do not have a fan up, but they're meeting the other crossover or setup requirements. Now I'm going to go up here. I'm going to just bring this up. And I'll show you how complicated these filters are. If any of these conditions are true on these VPA flags, or if any of these bullish candles appear, then you're going to get the green bars. And if when it crosses over, then you're going to get the dark green bar. But the undercutting during this period right here, if you get have any of these that appear because of the or statement, then it's going to show signs of accumulation. And then the dark green bars are the crossover bars. So the whole purpose of putting these together, I did, Gil Morales wanted something, so I put these together and build them uh, myself rather than just, uh, you know, relying on crossovers and so on. I incorporated the candles and the VPA flags, and it really does a good job of locating stocks that are under accumulation. If you want to look at the bearish trades, you can do that right here. There's only a few of them, uh, but I, I did put them in there in case you're looking for shorts. Now, one thing I do want to say is you don't have to do all securities with this. You can go in here and you can choose a group. And let's say you only want optionable stocks. So go into the custom groups, option volume, select one of these. 300 most active options. And you can see that I'm in here now. Make sure the 
filters engaged, and now I only have 21 securities to look at. This is the three under the six, and that was end of day, and let's see what's happening today. These are stocks that have active options, and you can see that Zscaler and CrowdStrike and Global Star are at the top of the list. Let's take a look at, at Zscaler. Now, I do this a lot because I'm looking for stocks where I can uh, uh, use uh, debit and credit spreads and so on rather than risking a bunch of capital on stocks. So I look at these folders, or I use them, I should say. Okay, so what do we have here? We're looking for a stock, and I'm going to bring those uh, the arrow up again. Where the fan is up, here's the 18 the 50, the 100, and the 200. Stock was moving up. It's got a high RS rank, but earnings are coming out the 29th. There's some sort of bad news on here, but notice this. Here's a bullish candle. I mean, after the gap, that's a bullish candle because it opened here, traded down to here, and closed here. This one is bullish because the close is greater than the open plus there is a VPA flag on here and then here's a bullish candle today the three will not cross the six for a while yet because this had to come from down in this area right around two hundred dollars and where is it today it's at 238 but as soon as this sold off the bulls stepped in and these Green volume bars show us that. Well, the candles do, but the green volume bars confirm it. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Let's look at number two, CrowdStrike. Same thing. Earnings are due in March. Here's a gap down. Found support at the 50. And what do we have? We have a bullish candle here, bullish candle here bullish candle. These three bullish candles are why this stock is showing up in this scan. There's no crossover yet, but there are bullish candles. There's no VPA signals or flags in here. Going back here, accumulation, accumulation, effort to rise, high volume up bar closing on the high indicates strength as that crossed over. Moved up. It stayed above the three all the way until here. This was some bad news, but this uh, bull, bulls or bullish, people that are bullish on the stock traders thought, what a bargain. I've got a gift. I'm going in to buy. Let's go in and look uh, at one more. Now that's a cheap stock. Let's look at Carvana. I think earnings came out. No, I don't know why. Okay, here's accumulation, shot up, gapped up to here, selling off. This is actually a bearish candle at this point, even with the gap and the green bar. Green bar is because of the crossover, but you can see they're selling into it. And if you click on the VPA, an upthrust bar after a move, a sure sign of weakness. The upthrust at very high volume confirms weakness. Effort to move lower. So be careful with a signal like this. I'll do one more and then I'm going to end this video. It's gotten longer than I wanted. Uh, how about Snowflake? Okay, you can see a lot of accumulation, a lot of crossover bars here. Here is a gap down, but a bullish candle and a low volume test. Let's get that arrow back up here. Here's your low volume test. Notice how low the volume was, but it closed at the top of its range. There's a confirmation uh, the next day on this effort to rise and then a gap up. It has resistance right here. This could be a hanging man candle. It's got to get through that resistance, but I'm just pointing out these signals right now on the undercut and rally scans. 
Okay, I'm going to end it here. I hope this made some sense. But what I'm going to do is, over the next several videos, spend more time on these favorites. So when you install the add-on today, tomorrow morning, it's going to contain my favorite daily prospecting scans. And I would say that uh, uh, the uh, Undercut and Rally are some of my favorites because they look for lower risk trades. They look for pullbacks. When you have an up fan, it means they're pulling back with strength. I didn't spend much time on the weekly chart, but you should also always have a weekly chart here and a daily chart just to get the uh, strength of the trend and the direction of the trend. And then see if, if the weekly chart's strong and you get a pullback here, more than likely the stock will continue higher if the market is cooperating. Anyway, thank you for listening. Have a good weekend. Uh, I may or may not do uh, a report over the weekend. My daughter's here, so I probably won't. But uh, thank you for listening. And I'll continue to make more of these. And I'll get into some of these others in the next videos. I've covered these before, but I want to cover them again because these things really work to show you what's going on in the market.